My name's Sarah Mountford-Smith, I'm Serial Herbicide Product Manager at BASF. My name's Lynn Tatnell, I'm based at ADAS Boxworth, I'm a weed biologist that specialises in herbicide resistance. It's very important for growers to test for black grass resistance so you know the status of the black grass population in your own fields and on your farm so you can understand the right products that you're putting on the right chemistry to match the resistance status you have and you're obviously not then wasting money on products that are not going to work on your actual black grass population you have in your farm. We'd ideally say that you should test at least every five years, um, more frequently the better, but um, a five year test on a particular field would give you a good indication um, and if you've been rotating products within that time you will know how, how often you need to be able to test within that time. The best areas on your field to test resistance would be as wide an area as possible. If you have a field such as we do here with resistance black grass or black grass population across a wide area, you need to be testing between a few different tram lines, at least two to three tram lines wide, probably an area approximately 100 metres square would be ideal. Don't just come into the farm gate and test in that small little patch. You need to be moving along all the time in an area as thick as this, keep moving on the go and um, sample as you go and don't just home in on one area. The best time to collect samples for resistance testing is usually the second to third week in July. Um, in a slightly later season as this, the, the black grass can take a little bit longer to mature, but it's as the heads have about 10 to 20 percent of the macheting on the top, the rest of it is, is almost perfect. And a, a sample like this, where they just easily come off in your hand, is the perfect time to take them. You don't want to be yanking seed off the head. It's not ripe and it will be too green. Lynn, can you take me through the process of how to collect black grass seed for resistance testing? OK, so the best way to collect is to come to your patch with a plastic bag initially in the field and as you touch, you need to take the heads as you touch them and they gently, you gently touch them, the seed will fall off, the ripe seed will fall off immediately. So you need to move around to different plants and not force any of the heads. So it's really just the, the ripest seeds will come off. Um, and they're the seeds you want for testing that will be viable. So you don't want to be pulling the whole seed? You definitely don't want to be pulling off. the whole head and you don't want to be snipping off heads and putting them into bags, which is what quite often happens. So you definitely want to be sampling from an area and moving around all the time. And once you finish from this patch, move on to other patches in the field. So this black grass head would be ideal and it's ripe and ready for testing. So you literally just touch the seed and anything that's viable will fall out immediately. So anything that's starting to change at the top there to brown seeds that fall out immediately. Okay. That's far too green and the seed there are not ripe and if you were to force those off they wouldn't germinate because they're not ready to collect so you must avoid heads that are as okay. green as that. So you can only really test on seed that is really just but is viable. Is viable and ripe so it's this nice brown okay. seed that easily falls off the head as okay. you touch them lightly. Okay and, and how much seed? Um, the, the quantity of seed um, we'd say a small mugful so this quantity is ideal, Okay. Um, obviously the more the merrier, so if we have a large selection, if you've got a, a, um, a very large patch obviously it's better to get a representative sample of your patch, but this is certainly a very good quantity to have for testing. It's best to move around as, as much as you can to different patches and you just keep collecting as you go and just take the ripest ones from the top, it's, it, you soon get into the rhythm of the ones that will, that will shed easily. where you've got big areas like this it's best to just keep moving yeah. and cover as much of your field as you can. So I've got about a mug full of seed, what do I do with that now? Okay the best thing is to transfer it into a paper envelope immediately in the field so you don't want it to sweat in plastic so if you pour okay. it into paper okay. and then immediately let that air dry because particularly if there's any moisture when you're collecting you want that to have air dried in the field um, or, or in your car or back in back at home so air dry that seal that up how, and then how long do I leave it to dry for? a couple of hours just to air dry like that but then I would recommend sealing it immediately labeling it up and then you need to send it off for testing mm -hmm. so you can get um, a form for testing on the ADAS website you fill in, you put your sample details and field number on your sample and on the form and that can be sent through to here to Boxworth um, as soon as possible. So don't delay holding on to your seed samples, they need to be posted as soon as possible so they can be processed as quickly as possible. Okay, um, on, on the back of the ADAS testing form, um, you're requesting some cropping information, why is that? 
The more information we have about the field or the products that have gone onto that field will help us interpret the results. So as we have a bigger picture of this sample and what's happened to this field in the, in the past, then that will help us with the interpretation of the test results. OK, so when you send this, the results back, you're interpreting the results at the same time? Yes, that's correct. So when can I expect to get the results of my resistance test back? OK, the test is broken down into two parts. We have the Petri dish method for ACCAs, um, and that's a, a quick Petri dish method that will results can be back by the end of September, assuming samples are in to us at the beginning of August. So we do stress that it's, please send samples as quickly as possible and don't hold on to them so we can process them rapidly. The ALS test is done um, in glasshouse pots, so it takes a little bit longer, and the results, again, can be back by the end of October, assuming the samples have come in quickly. Um, results will be emailed back to people with the details that they've provided on the form. The format will be a table of results with, with their uh, population against some standard population so they can see where they fit on the scale. They will have a percent reduction and they have an R rating which is the resistance R ratings and those categories will be explained on the form and, and given a description and then for further information it's best they contact their own advisor or agronomist or contact us directly.